hello. Uh, I'm Lukáš Doktor uh, from Red Hat, from Vert team. And today I'd like to talk a bit about bisection and not just for Git. Uh, so first, I'll, uh, I'm not sure like how much familiar are you with Git bisect? Uh, who here is familiar with it? Like half, half. Cool. Uh, that's a great, uh, great beginning. Uh, so I'll do some short uh, introduction for those who are not that familiar with it. Uh, then I'll give you like our usage and things that we were solving and may be reused. I, I'm trying to be real practical here. And then we'll move to places where Git bisect actually didn't work for us and why we actually in the end had to create something new, uh, but pretty much inspired by Git bisect. Um, so bisection, what it is, uh, in short, you, it uses uh, interval halving uh, to quickly find a way where things changed. Uh, in Git terminology, you have a good commit or and uh, a bad commit, and uh, you want to quickly <coughs> find out which which commit in between caused the, uh, caused the issue. So you start in the middle. There is cut. So you start in the middle, and if the result is same as here, you jump to the right into the middle of the range. Uh, if it's the same as uh, on the bad side, then you jump to the middle into the left. Uh, bear with me; it's not exactly great on the picture, but plus minus. Uh, and when you, you you keep jumping until you find two commit apart, where one is good, one is bad, and return the first bad commit. By the way, bad doesn't mean it's bad; it just means it has the same output as this one, uh, uh, as this one, and not as this one. Okay. Uh, very quickly, you uh, on Git, which is a subversion system. I, I mean, I guess you're familiar with that. Uh, you, you can uh, on a Git repository start a bisection. Since then, you can tag a certain commit as good, bad, or skipped. Uh, skip is very important. I'll talk on, about it on the next slide. Uh, and once you specify one bad and one good commit. Uh, git bisect will automatically start checking out the commits that it thinks you should check next. Uh, afterwards, you can manually set that, okay, this one is good, this one is bad, and you know, keep jumping until git is happy and tells you, okay, this is your first bad commit. Alternatively, you can use git bisect run, uh, which, uh, where you can just hand it over a script or a command line. Uh, it will execute that script on each revision it thinks needs to be checked out. Uh, and based on the return code, it either assumes it's a good result, it's a bad result, there is a skip return code of 125, and everything above 128, including, means a critical failure, which means it interrupts. So don't be scared, like if, if something interrupts immediately, and you don't know why, it's probably because it returned minus one, for example, but because it's above 128. And you, need, you can uh, address the issue and uh, resume the bisection from, from there. Uh, afterwards, you can use git bisect log to see whether it's sensible, because sometimes git can wander off and uh, git log is uh, useful for that. I mentioned skip is very important. This is because uh, bisection is a fast method to converge, which means, uh, take this example, uh, when you start on this commit and immediately this one fails, you leave out this part and you never touch it. Because it was bad, right? You can skip this, never look at it again. Uh, which means you jump here and here and return this as to be the first bad commit. In reality, if this was not related failure, it was, for example, a setup issue and not, not a real failure of your test case. Uh, instead, what you could do is you can skip the commit. You can say, okay, I wasn't able to test this one commit. Uh, what Git does is it jumps very close tries that commit, if it works, it jumps to the right, you know, to the right, to the left, and finds the first, uh, first bad commit. So it's important, uh, you can use it for, for example, setup issues or for uncertain issues. Like, let's say you have a certainty level and you say, okay, I, I'm really not certain whether it's failed or passed. Skip that. Worst case, you can just uh, bisect it again without that. The simple workflow <coughs> looks Pretty much like that. We will need that in the second part of the presentation. So you, you start a bisection, you can give it a bad commit and good commit, and then just run a bisection. Where the script can look somehow like this, it could be just a simple wrapper, 
uh, where you don't need to check out the commit because Git does that for you. I mean, automatically you can assume you will always be on the commit that, uh, that you are testing. But what you need to do is, for example, deploy your application. Why? Because uh, Git doesn't know anything about how to deploy your application. So, uh, some people, so sometimes people just forget about this and you can see how easily you can just skip this commit if, if this fails. Unless it's ex expected, then you can just return, for example, one. And then you run your test suite. You don't need to read this slide, just, forgot, uh, just uh, focus on the colors. Uh, the red lines means lines that you manually enter. Yellow lines are uh, the out is the output of bisector, which tells you, okay, I'm now on this commit, I, I have those, those many revisions uh, left to test, etc. So you can see how it's progressing, for example, if it takes too long. And then you have blue output, which uh, is the output of the script. So you can see that I have like, it tries one commit and there is some failure, one commit failure there, I execute actually false and then I execute true. You can perhaps guess what, how it ends up, right? And in the end, what Git, Git tells us, okay, there are only skipped commits left to test. What it means? I had actually skipped commits. I, have a, I had a good commit, then I had a couple of skipped commits, and I had a bad commit. So Git won't test those skipped commits again. Why? Because they are skipped, and it's on you to decide like, which out of, three, or out of those three commits uh, were uh, the first failure. So pretty useful. Good thing, like note about uh, merge commits. It works. Uh, it descends them pretty well, so you no need to uh, care about that part. Everything was, works uh, seamlessly. Git bisect log again. No need to read that uh, now, but uh, it just it is there and it's available. Now, if you remember, I mentioned I'm from Red Hat, from Vert team, and actually the project I'm working on is the performance QMU CI, and. Uh, it's called CI, except uh, each build takes 8 to 12 hours, which means I cannot really afford running a CI, which means per commit basis. Uh, but I'm faking it pretty well. Nobody actually noticed it, uh, because I'm running daily jobs and sometimes weekly jobs. And in case of failure, I just uh, rerun the same test, but with limited set of tests uh, using git bisect to speed up the, uh, the process. There were three little issues with that, uh, and uh, I solved that in, uh, in the Czech script, and I think you can inspire by it, that's why I'm here. Uh, first problem was, uh, I mentioned performance testing. So it's not a feature testing, which means I don't have like good, bad. I just have one throughput and other throughput. So how to deal with that? You'll see on the next slide. Uh, then reproducibility is an issue. Even though we use usually five uh, samples to, uh, and use the middle one to improve the reliability, it's still not that reliable. So I usually use two out of three modes, but if the reliability is, uh, reliability is under 50%, we can, for example, switch to does it fail in three consequent uh, runs, etc. Helps pretty much uh, and can be in the, uh, implemented on the same place. Uh, second thing we do is uh, related to the good and bad uh, part, because we are actually reusing the already assessed results to further improve uh, the uh, like next assessment. And last but not least, uh, not just with perf testing, but uh, sometimes you may want to plot some uh, some outputs, and it's good to have them sorted according to Git log and not according how it was jumping with with Git bisect. It's pretty simple, but maybe not that obvious, so I'm including it here as well. So this uh, is a part of like slightly simplified part of, of this file from our project. Uh, and it basically shows how we, how we drive the execution. Again, you already seen that uh, on my slides before, except we don't specify the revisions here. We just check out the good revision. Then we run our check script, telling it this will be the good baseline. That's important. You will see uh, how it's treated on the next slide. And the result of this uh, is we get two directories. Like directory one is called good one, directory two is called good two. And in there you would find uh, JSON results uh, with multiple throughputs or you know whatever uh, is currently measured. Then we tell Git that this one was actually good one. 
we check out the bad commit, do the same, except we tell the check script that this will be the bad baseline, and it creates bad one, bad two. Again, with JSON results. Tell the git that this is bad, which means we are ready to start a to run a bisection. We run the bisection, this time telling it, okay, don't just run this, uh, the test, but also uh, check whether they were closer to good or closer to bad. And afterwards, generating a report. So, this is the bisect script. Don't try to, uh, to check which uh, language is it. It's, it's like simplified uh, to fit into slide better. But what we do is we execute run perf, which is the tool we use for <laughs> testing that generates current results using this suffix. And if it's a good or bad, which means we're generating the baseline, we simply just run it again with, uh, with a, a suffix of two, generating current result two, and afterwards we just move the results, which means we use the current result and move it to the name good or bad using the same suffix. So all files or, or directories that, that are called current result, we just move them to good one two or bad one two. That's it. So that, that's the baselines, okay. Uh, next, we, ex we run the check part, which means we are not in this branch, so we just skip this one, right? So we still execute the run perf, get the current result one, and then we ex execute a tool called diff perf that understands the uh, directory output, so it, it looks at all directories called good and g and bad and b and creates two groups of results. And it tries to assess whether the current result one is closer to here or closer to that. That was the first implementation. Now we are actually using uh, standard deviations uh, to assess which is more probable, but uh, works the same way. I mean, you can, you can in just inspire by places where, where you, can, uh, you can do that. After, uh, and yeah, the return code is uh, zero or one, closer to good, closer to bad. So that's the first questions, like how, how do we check whether it's good or bad, we just look at which is probable, which is more probable. Is it like more likely to be good or more likely to be bad? Then we execute run perf for the second time. You remember, two out of three mode. Get the return two. If they match, which means we are done. No need to do anything else because two out of three, why would you uh, execute the third one if you already know that two of them are matching? Uh, but if they are not matching, we need to execute run perf for the third time, base our return code on, on this one, because if you already have one good, one bad, the third one cannot have the third state, which means it will be closer to one of those. And afterwards, we move the, uh, move the results, but this time, the name will be the index, like a global index, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever, one million one. And we suffix it with B for bad results and G for good results. This is very important because we need to distinguish which are goods and which are bad and need them sorted uh, for the report. And the suffix is also important because here you may have noticed that I don't look at uh, only for good results but also for anything suffix with G, which means in the next run I will include all those results that were assessed as good. That includes those results that did not originally look like good ones, which means in the next step, even though they previously were assessed as bad ones, can be in the group of good results and further you know, move the good results slightly to, to, to bad results. This worked well for us and significantly improved the bisection unless uh, we had an error at the beginning. If you have error in the beginning, you can just rerun that, uh, that again, but if, if you don't, as we go, we further improve the like, standard jittery that is like, acceptable for us. And afterwards, we exit based on the return code. In the end, I mentioned we are generating the results, so again, it's very simple. You can either use git log and try to match which commit uh, belongs to which your, of your results, and you know, it's kind of tedious, especially with merge commits where you can like, have those commits like, in a weird order. But you can just stop and think, and you know, if, if you start here, and on good result, you jump to the right, into the middle, so you're not jumping over, 
anything, uh, and on bad result you jump to the left, what you can do is you can just take all good results, leave out the bad ones, and let them sort it as they go, like first, fourth, and fifth. Then you take all bad results, leave out the good ones, and because you're jumping to the left, you need to reverse the order, so you, can, you, you, take, you take them in, in reverse order, which means you get third bad, second bad, and then you have the bad result. It's as simple as that, and the result is like, again, no need to understand everything. The main uh, thing you can see here is we are not jumping from left to right, which means we have all those commits that uh, were good, and there are all those commits that were bad. And you, like, four tests, not important uh, for this presentation. I'm just demonstrating that it works and it really like draws the line. So that would be the introduction to Git Bisect and some goodies for you if, if you already are using it. Anyway, where Git Bisect didn't work for us is mainly downstream. And it's mainly because we don't have a Git to bisect over. We just have a list of nightly builds revisions. And it's solvable. I mean, imagine like after two weeks finding out that something is wrong. Sure, you can spawn a job and you know run 14 times to find out that okay, those two, th th this nightly build actually caused the regression. If it's enough, that's good. But we usually we can usually see like for example 20, 30 pack packages that were updated, and sometimes you can guess which one caused it. But sometimes there are so many changes that you can't really say who is responsible for for the failure. So. What we would do is we would just uh, provision the old restore, try to install a package, you know, one by one. Okay, works, doesn't work. In the end, you find out that this is our sentence, so you can rerun it again. Then you find out that uh, you need multiple packages together to actually get this failure, like you need QMU and a libvirt change in order to reproduce. And it's ca quite chaotic. Uh, for years, even before uh, PerfCI, I was looking for a tool, and if you know of any Git, uh, any tool that would allow something similar, like Git bisect, but not on, uh, on Git, I would love to hear about it, but I failed to find one. So I just said, okay, enough. I have to do something about it, and I did that. And by working on it, I mentioned we have usual multiple packages, and they are independent. So I don't need to just uh, bisect whether this uh, package is uh, important, but I also like need the combinations. So I said, it would be nice if I can, you know, bisect over multiple independent access. And, you know, since I'm reinventing the wheel, let's, let's uh, add it as well. And here you can see the usage is pretty much similar. I, I mean, why, why would I reinvent that, right? I just uh, reuse what uh, Git already does. So uh, the command line is similar, except you need to specify all the arguments yourself. We have some uh, helpers, but... Uh, for, for this, let's, let's, uh, let's try that. And you can see that this time I used uh, the same commit range and in a previous example, but on top I added two more axes. I said, okay, but we, we changed multiple things, not just uh, the git revision, but in our CI, we were so brave that we changed revision and you know, some complexity and some uh, test suite, for example. And we change that all simultaneously so we don't know what of those uh, things uh, actually caused uh, the regression. We need to tweak our, uh, our script a bit because Bisector doesn't know anything about Git. I mean, it's independent project. It uses list of strings. So uh, you need to check out the commit and skip if it doesn't work. You need, still need to deploy your project. And then you need to run the project and maybe you want to pass those extra two axes as two extra arguments, right? So let's see how it's gonna work. Again, it's no need to read things. It's just read. You need to specify all the commits. That's the only difference. Uh, then you get a summary, which I find pretty nice because you have multiple axes, so it's not always obvious how things will look like in the end. So you get the summary. Uh, if you are happy with that, you just run the bisection and you can see again some yellow and green uh, and blue uh, outputs that are you know changing, changing. We have more axes, so more variants. And in the end, it will tell you, okay, first bad commit is this one. Unfortunately, we don't uh, we don't list all the skipped ones uh, to be delivered. And it tells you that we ended up in nine steps, and the failure was caused only by the axis zero. 
you remember, we had three axes, so the first and second axes were useless, they didn't change anything, because they don't do anything. Uh, and only the first axis, so the git revision mattered in this example. The looks look slightly different. I can like, compare it here. I just uh, shrink the shells here. So this is the git log. Uh, this is our log. Uh, I mean, you would probably guess why. It's because if you use arbitrary strings, things can be pretty long, and you wouldn't actually guess anything from that. Uh, and second, we use multiple axes, which means uh, you know escaping that, so we understand which revision that was is hard. So we just use serial ID of, I mean, index of uh, of that item and uh, separated by minuses. So what do we what do you have support currently for? Uh, for the arguments, comma separated list. That's pretty simple. We do have a support for Python-like range. Uh, more importantly, like we don't use that, but what we use is the URL thing, which is very simple HTTP parser, but it works well with Koji or Brew if you're familiar with that. Uh, you can just uh, you have a, list, a page where you have all the brew builds and you can say, okay, I'm interested on, or in all revisions between this build and this build and it, it will give you uh, links to the brew builds. And you can easily consume it in your test suite, install, install this, this brew build and you know, use it. So this is what we use 90% of the time and the rest of the 10% is the beaker, uh, beaker helper which uh, gives you a distro revision. So we have, uh, if you use Beaker, pro provided you use Beaker, uh, you, you say you have this nightly build, this nightly build, and I want all the builds between because I'm lazy and I don't want to copy and paste the names. Now for variant, uh, for arguments, I already showed you this part, right? We run the, the suite and it, it automatically injected uh, all the axes like keep changing the, the values of, of those arguments, like first, second, and third, like the positional arguments. Alternatively, if you don't want to use run and you want to do it manually, you can use uh, bisector args uh, to get all arguments or args with an index uh, of the access you are, uh, access you are interested in and it will give you the value, the current value. After you check out to a different version, it, it will give you a different value again. Alternatively, if you just need a wrapper, so why would you write a wrapper? You can use, uh, you use your templating mechanism and you know, use the check run instead. Last but not least, we have uh, the multiple access thing, which is uh, interesting, uh, but I don't think it's uh, the best way, but it's systematical, which means it works for me. Uh, imagine a situation where you have, a you have actually eight kernel changes, eight liver changes, eight QMA changes, and eight lib BLK IO changes. What a coincidence. Uh, so you know that on index 0000, zero, zero, zero you have uh, the good versions, right? You know that those are tested, so you don't test it. It's like you believe the user. Then you have a bad revision, which is the, the last of combination they actually gave you, right, the 77777. So what do you need, ex, like what do you need extra, uh, unlike in git bisect, you have multiple axes. So you actually need to know whether the current axis is useful, I mean, whether you, you want to actually bisect it. So to save time, you, you start with all bads, then check out the first axis and say, okay, let's, let's try whether this axis actually affects something. So we'll, in here you can see that previously 777 was bad, now 0777 is good. So there is something happening on the, on the kernel front. So you check out the third one, fifth one, fourth one, and you now know that the fourth one is the first bad, which means the 4777 is bad. We can build on that. So we switch to the axis one, and do the same. Again, it's a good one, which means yes, Libvirt is also like a suspect. So we bisect, uh, bisect libvirt and find out that yes, we have the first bad uh, uh, on the index five. So we can check out the next axis. So like four, five, oh, seven. And see, nothing changes. It's still bad. Which means this axis is actually irrelevant. No matter what you do, I mean, maybe somewhere in the middle it would work. You don't know, but it's likely that if before it worked, and now it doesn't, 
uh, nothing changed. So we can skip this one and not investigate it at all. That's like a slight speed optimization. Then you need to check out the next axis. Uh, and, and again, you're using the first bet, which is in this case zero. Uh, and uh, you find out that the seventh is the first bet here. So what, and the output, because you don't have any further access to investigate, the 4, 5, or 7 is the first combination that is bad. What does it mean? In Git, it's simple. Like you get a single commit, or multiple commits, provided there are skips. Uh, what it means is that if you use uh, <coughs> kernel libbrkmu uh, and libblko with 3, 5, or 7, it will work well. 4, 4, or 7, it will work well. 4, 5, or 6, it will work well. But 4507 is the first bad combination, which means first, second, and third, and fourth axis, like the kernel, libbert, and libblkio changes are needed together. Note, uh, when, I was actually, when I actually started with bisector, I used different approach, and this kind of failures were pretty hard to find by uh, that way. I mean, they, were, they didn't look that nicely, uh, but all kind of failure worked well. So if your workflow is likely to use all kind of failures, feel free to contact me and we can bring it back. But it was just prolonged in the uh, bisection, so I'm, I'm happy with this one because in RCI, this is the only thing we are, uh, we are looking for, for. So the key takeaways are Git bisect is cool. If you're on Git, don't even think about anything else. It's, it's cool, it's, I mean, don't, don't use anything else, get, get, get the basic, it's fine. Uh, but maybe uh, you can inspire by some of our goodies that, that I provided you here. If you're not on Git, or if you want to, for example, bisect multiple submodules, because they tend to break as well, you may check out our project. We can add the Git provisional so you don't need to specify all the revisions in between. And uh, it can help you with bisecting over multiple arrays or just simply over things that are not uh, git revisions like uh, nightly builds or uh, or your images it could survive that probably just know that it's like early beta stage which is good and bad because you can join and help me and improve the tool I know that skips are you know not that well implemented at this point but uh, in terms of good and bad uh, results it works pretty stable and we are using it uh, in our uh, pipelines so, any questions? Yes? This is on you. This is a very simple project. Like, it does POSIX like. Like, you don't do anything you don't, are not supposed to do. What Git Bisect does, uh, or oh, oh, sorry, what Bisector does, is uh, it will just give you, okay, use this string. In our case, it's, uh, for example, the brew, brew build, like link to, to that kernel. What you do afterwards is on you, and we are storing information in, uh, in hidden files, so you can reboot the machine freely if, if you want to. So it's on your check script what, what you want to do, basically. And yeah, the question was whether I can reboot the machine and Okay, I'm mentioning now. Okay, there was another question there, or no? No, no, one slice. Okay, so green tree. So first question was uh, whether we store all the information, what was good and bad. Yes, we do, because if you have, for example, sparse access, sometimes you don't need to test that again because it's still the same. Uh, and besides, we need to uh, show the user the git log, or git, I'm, I'm keep calling it git log, it's bisector log, but it's the same uh, log. So we are storing that information. 
And second question was, uh, what happens like when we are bisecting uh, uh, like improvement and then following by a regression? Uh, if you uh, if you don't catch it, which means you are here and you are here and you don't you don't see anything, you just don't know anything because it's it's bisection. You you don't test that, right? How would you know that it happened? But if there is like slight imp like if you have uh, if you have certain level certain level and in between there is uh, a spike, then again it's like slightly outside of the scope of this presentation. But what we do is we start the bisection. And this will be actually so unprobable that it will uh, probably be this one. Uh, I mean, we, we were trying to do the skips thing, but uh, we haven't had time to do that yet. But so it would be best to skip those, obviously. But uh, we are not doing it at this moment. And one more thing, uh, we previously and sometimes like we, we have like uh, really oscillating uh, values that, that doesn't that <coughs> the probability doesn't work we just use the near nearest uh, nearest neighbor okay. and so obviously this one will be closer to that one <laughs> but I mean worst case uh, what we usually do I mean that's what, why you have git log or bisect log uh, for because you can see that okay from here it looks some somehow odd so you can rerun with a s shorter range which is what you should probably do with the best Okay, I think there was. I have a question about the bisect script, the skip, the if one, and how to do For example, my test is about the binary. Can I skip the docs commits? Because the docs commits will not cause Uh, like to skip it in ad skip them in advance. Yes, because uh, commits like uh, because you know because you know that okay. So d if I understood the question correctly, uh, you you have uh, uh, some so Git revision right like revisions and you know that some range should be skipped because you know that they can't be tested right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, with Git bisect you can do that because uh, before you start the bisection and even if you start the bisection you can always use Git checkout to check out a certain commit and you can say okay Git uh, bisect bad uh, uh, Git bisect uh, skip sorry and then you can check out the other one and get, do that the same basically you create a for loop over your uh, your skip commits and uh, after you finish it will again like the Git bisect skip the last Git bisect skip will uh, let the bisect uh, to check out the commit that will be, uh, should be tested next. Uh, with bisector, unfortunately, uh, not at this moment. So git bisect, yes, we don't at this moment. Feel free to commit, <laughs> commit that. Uh, by the way, we have, uh, it's Python project, so you can just uh, import that project and use it in your project as well if you're interested. You don't need to use the uh, command line for it, or by script. Any other questions? Okay, there. What are some use cases for this apart from cloud detection? Right? Like, because since this can be used for other properties as well, so mm -hmm. are you seeing any other use cases for multiple assets in the future? Yes, I, I thought about multiple like different use cases. Like, for example, I to test it, I just you know try, for example, booting the biggest machine with different kind of sizes of, of RAM. It behaves nicely. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it, it could be used for some kind of tasks as well. But I mean, you name it. <laughs> yes? I was doing something like that for performance testing for network applications because you have a bunch of parameters, you mm -hmm. can feed them, and you are perfectly setting for the optimal configuration. So that's one of the use cases for this optimization. Okay. And I forgot to repeat the questions. I know. So yeah, the question was whether it can be used for something else, and yes, there are you know certain ways. Like for example, in tuning, you can you can uh, search for different arguments. Although we are jumping from one axis to another, so it may not be optimal for that case. But again, open source on GitHub, so <laughs> you can you can contribute <laughs> contribute that. Like different modes are welcome. Anything else? 
Dziękuję.